let's talk about that number E, which has come up a few times. And we probably better explain what it is and where it comes from. It's one of those very interesting mathematical numbers like pi. Pi is used when we talk about circles. It's the ratio of the uh, diameter to the circumference of a circle. But E shows up in things that are continu that continuously increase or decrease. Here's what E is. The expression that generates E it looks an awful lot like an interest formula, where you have 1 plus 1 over something. It would be R over N in the interest formula. Well, as x gets very large, closer and closer to infinity, and that x and that x both get closer and closer to infinity, then this expression begins to approach that number e. e is approximately equal to 2.718281828. Looks like there might be a repeating part here, but that's just kind of fluky right there. The decimals after that don't repeat. E is an irrational number. Um, I'm going to put this on my calculator. That's a parenthesis right there under that um, uh, blinking rectangle. So 1 plus 1 over x all raised to the x power. And I'm going to pick some values for E. One from 1 to 100,000. And you can see that as I pick, as I, x gets very large, then um, this number over here approaches what the value of E is. Well, who uses E? Um, we see it in the study of populations. It tends to show up in things that continuously increase. The study of populations, growth of bacteria, because the growth of bacteria is a, is a type of population. Uh, we see it in the spread of disease. Con uh, disease continues to disperse and spread, and so it spreads according to some power of E. Um, we also see it in continuously compounded interest. Um, in continuously compounded interest, that means your money is growing all the time. Um, and so if you invest $100 at a uh, continuously compounded interest rate, then if you walk in a year later in the morning, you will get a little less money than if you walk in a year later in the afternoon to take your money out. Um, here's how we get the number E, or this, uh, this formula for continuously compounded investing. Let's let this R over N equal 1 over K. Well, if that's true... And if we um, multiply do means extremes, then n times 1, which is just n, should be the same as r over k. Now, why I'm doing this will become a little more obvious in just a moment. So let's start with our compound interest formula. It should be familiar. And we decided that if n is equal to r over k, then I could write, instead of n here, I could write r, r over k. And instead of n here, I could write r over k. So this is what this formula is right down here. And what I'm doing here is spreading out the um, exponents a little bit. I'm going to take this k part, change order of it with the r, group the r with a t, so that this expression raised to a k and that raised to an rt, the power rt, would be the same because k times rt is rkt, right? Like that. Well, this expression is, is uh, approaches E as K gets very large. So this expression right here is our compound interest formula. A is equal to P E to the RT power. That's our formula for compound interest. Um, and again, A is the amount at the end of the investment. P is the amount that's invested. E is that magical number E. R is our interest rate as a decimal, and T is the time that our investment is left in the bank growing. That's how we develop the continuously compounded interest formula.